I'm Liz Larson with The Art of Frosting and I have a guest here in my studio today, my daughter Leah Larson from Leah's Crazy Cake Lab and she's going to help us make this cool <laughs> this cool and interesting witch barbie cake. So I want to tell you in advance, we had some problems with this one, but it turned out great in the end. So please bear with us and have some fun along the way. You can laugh with us. Let's get started. First thing we have to do is make the template for our skirt. I'm actually going to say skirts because we're just going to use pieces. This is a nine inch pan and I'm using the lip. My cake is an eight inch pan and I want my skirts to be a little bit bigger. I'm using this coin. I don't really know what it is. It's about the size of a, maybe a 50 cent piece. You can also see this cap is about the same size. And that is going to give me um, room for the doll in the middle and kind of give me that round shape. So all I really need to do, I'm going to go ahead and cut into the middle because we're going to cut that in fours anyway. Okay, once this is cut out, we just want to cut it into fours. So I have set up here my little uh, area to drape things over. So what I want is for my pieces to end up like this. See how they're wavy? I want different waves, different shapes, so I can use them on my cake in different areas. So we're just gonna drape them over. So I've got this. Now, I'm using candy melts here, Welton candy melts, but you can use white chocolate with an oil-based color and get the same result. So I've got my candy melt melted down here and I don't wanna make it too thin because you want it to dry quickly. So don't overheat your candy melt. I put it about uh, a minute and 30 seconds on half power and then about another 45 seconds after I've stirred. If you're using real white chocolate, you need to be really careful and it's probably gonna be much less time than that. So just spread it out evenly and then use a bench knife or a ruler just to smooth it. You don't want to work it too much and you want to make sure you have enough candy melt on the corners and the edges so that it'll hold up its own weight. Then you want to come in with a spatula and I like to start at the waist because the waist we can cover. Kind of drape it over. This is tricky. And then drape it over your pieces in kind of random ways. That's actually good because you know you can get your skirt to look like it's flowing. Go ahead and reuse your candy melt so you don't have to use a lot and you want to make at least eight of these. Two eight inch rounds torted and what I'm going to do is since we want it to look like a moon I want to round it on the bottom. So I'm sticking my knife in at about a 45 degree angle and then I'm just turning and then I'm just turning the turntable so that it's even and keeping my hand as still as possible with the same angle. So then you should just be able to pull out the cake from the bottom. And then when you ice it, it's going to make a really cool rounded bottom. We want to cut a straight face for the moon and for the doll to be on it. So I'm just coming in about an inch and a half maybe and going cutting straight down. I'm just icing the cake but I want to show you that I'm putting some bands around the icing to make it rounder because it is a moon and it is round. So. I just want to add a couple band, thicker bands around and then we'll sculpt and make it smooth. I just smoothed out my icing a little bit with a regular spatula and now I'm going to use my parfait strip or you can use a Ziploc bag and smooth out the rest. So I'm just tucking the parfait strip under and then pulling up so that you can get that round edge on the bottom that we cut. The moon isn't perfectly round and it's definitely not perfectly smooth. So you don't have to be a perfectionist on this one because um, 
it's gonna look more realistic if it's not smooth anyway. So, so uh, I'm gonna airbrush the cake yellow. Um, you don't have to airbrush it. If you don't have an airbrush, you can just color your icing yellow. And for you pros, this is just a faster way of doing it. So I'm just doing some craters in the moon to accentuate it and, and just put a little more detail on there. I'll show you how to do a couple. You don't have to use the airbrush again. You can just use a parchment bag and cut the tip off and stripe it with black and gray and it'll look just as cool. So it's my turn, the doll part. So I just want you to know that I do have a naked doll here. Just so I don't get comments about naked dolls, I have given her a little privacy doily. Also, this next bit could look a little pornographic, so try and avoid that as well. PG rating here most of the time. So I've got a 12 inch skewer that I'm gonna use for her broomstick. We wanna position it and position her so that we get her on the cake correctly with the broomstick. So you're probably wondering why we cut off the front of the moon and this is the reason. We want to put her in and so that her leg is able to hang down flat over the side of the moon. Another thing is you need a doll with lots of joints. She has elbow and knee joints and hip joints as well. Otherwise I don't think you could get her in here right. So you want to make sure that she is in the right position looking like she's riding the moon and you want to put her leg out. Then we're going to try to get this leg down in straight because that's going to be your anchor and you want most of her fanny on the cake. So I get one shot at this. I'm going to put it right in the middle and we want to go straight down. Now I have a little room to readjust her and we can start working on her skirt. So this is an experiment for us too. This is the first time we're doing it. And I just want you to know the kind of thing I have to deal with here. I asked Leah, did she want to help with the ruffle part? And she said, no, because I don't know what the hell you're doing. Rude. Anyway, I just want you to know that it is an experiment for us. We're going to start to place our candy melt pieces of skirt on. But we want to put her petticoats on underneath with icing. We're going to do green and pink, uh, green and purple actually. And also the icing underneath is going to give us something to stick the candy melts to. We also need to get our framework under with some marshmallows. I'm going to use giant marshmallows like you've seen me do before, but you could use cupcakes or cookies or other things. We just need a little bit of support for our candy melts. So I lifted up our Barbie just a little so I can get in here. Remember that her skirts are going to come up and over the stick because that's what they would do. And I'm just going to start ruffling. Let it fall. See how it's kind of gathering and falling? I really want it to look like petticoats up over her skirt. Fill just a little bit there. There we go. Um, and so I'm going to do a couple of layers of green and I really want it to be very random. I want this skirt to look like it's really blowing in the wind. I want lots of movement. So I'm not going to use really regular uh, ruffle here. Just let it fall. Let it be very random. A little chaotic is what we want it to look like. So I've got my first layer in. And I'm going to come back in with, I just used a number um, 124 for that. This is a number um, 1270. I'm going to come back in here and do a big ruffle over. This one can be a little more regular. So see, I'm kind of getting a skirt effect with petticoat under. I'm going to start placing a couple of marshmallows where I think I want things to go. I really want a dynamic movement up and out the back and I may move them later but for right now I'm just going to place them and get a couple of ruffles on them. So again I want my petticoat 
to look like it's coming out underneath. So I'm going to give my kind of riotous ruffle. You were looking for an excuse to use the term riotous ruffle. I know you were. Now you have one. Okay, so I'm going to put my first piece on and I've kind of decided in advance where I want it and we need to make sure that it's going to stay. So I got to get enough icing under there to make it attached. Otherwise it's kind of heavy and it's going to fall off. So I'm having a little trouble with that. So let's lift it back off and we're going to put some icing here. Okay. And there we go. First one is on. Now we want to decide about the rest. I'm going to use a piece of wedge cut marshmallow and just tuck it down in so that I can put my next piece of candy melt. It will help me stick the candy melt to her as well as give me the support that I want. Okay, so we're just going to add our finishing touches. We're going to do a boot on her feet and then do her top. And these are all experiments. So one thing you want to think about if you're doing this cake is that you might want to try her top first. Ew. So you can use a parfait strip or a Ziploc bag. Um, I'm just kind of using the bag a little bit to shape the shoe. And, and now I just want to do the top. And I'm going to fill it in and my icing's really stiff so I'm going to be able to sculpt it and thin it later. And carefully, if I can, move her arm out of the way. Next we're going to add her hat. So we've just cut the same way that we did these. We just cut a circle. And this is about the size of a, like a mayonnaise jar lid. And I cut out, I cut out the center to fit her head. Let's see. Okay. So just delicately push it down on her head. Now I couldn't figure a way to get this exactly the right size, but that's okay. We're going to use our icing to fill in ever so delicately around her head. Now, after putting black icing on her hair, her hair is probably not going to be salvageable. So you can see I just made the top of the hat. I'm going to keep coming around until I get a point and then pull backward. Just like that. So our last step is that we're just going to do the end of the broom. So I just got a big marshmallow and I cut it into a cone shape. And we're very carefully going to put it on the bottom here. Hold the front end of the stick and push it up. Push it up a little farther than you would and then pull it down. Just like that. Now we're just gonna add the straw to the end of the broom. So I am just starting at the top and pulling and it's making the jagged points. So you're just going to push in and pull out to make those points at the bottom. Okay, so we did finish this cake, but by the skin of our teeth. So, I want to tell you that this one did not go as I had planned originally and like some people thought it might go. 
that's cake decorating for you. It's all an experiment. Some things work out and some things don't, but I think we worked out the kinks in this for you. For one, we really should have done the top of her bodice first. It worked out, but it would have been much easier to do the top first. What do you think? Well, I think that it, it turned out really well, but I think that the biggest thing for something like this is to just do it the way you want it, and when it's not perfect, stop touching it. Rude. <laughs> Whatever. So you know me more is more. I do like the way it turned out. I love that. It just looks like it's blowing in the wind. Now I want to tell you, if you are in an area that doesn't have candy melt, or you're in a very hot area, make the ruffles in the same way that we did Elsa. So put your marshmallows in, use your quick icer or number one, 1270, and make your ruffles fly like that, it'd be beautiful. This cake will not work out well in hot weather because of the, hot, of the chocolate, and it shouldn't be delivered where it's warm. What else? Um, I don't know, I think it went pretty well. So, make lots and lots of these little squares. One thing that we weren't able to get on camera, and that was another one of our problems, is a little filming, that um, you just keep putting the pieces in until they look how you want. Make sure you're attaching them with a little bit of frosting, and that it's supported by either a cupcake or a marshmallow, or even the other candy melt. So that worked out okay. In the end, I think it's kind of a cool design. I think it'll be a lot of fun for Halloween, and I think you guys will do some amazing things with it. You can find Leah at Leah's Crazy Cake Lab, Leah Larson channel. Lots more cake stuff there, Halloween stuff as well. You can find me at The Art of Frosting on Facebook and at www.theartoffrosting.blogspot.com. Thanks so much for watching and have fun with us. Bye, guys. Bye. Excuse me, Liz Larson. What did you do today? Did you take a shower? Rude. I heard that you threw a cake against the wall one time. Is that true? Are the rumors I'm making up true? <laughs> we need to do that. Can you see if I do it like mm -hmm. this? Okay. Uh, okay, so we did the top part, and you just want to fill in at the end on the bottom of the mushroom. Mushroom? <laughs> Marshmallow? I just smoothed, I just did a rough smooth with the, that doesn't make any sense.